Two million protesters in 52 countries rallied against Monsanto and genetically modified foods last week. So what's the dealio and why are all these people taking to the streets? <laughs> Hey everyone, you're watching D News, and I'm Lacey Green. About 90% of the soy, corn, sugar beets, cotton, and canola crops in the US are genetically modified. Although it's not immediately obvious, most of the products in the grocery store contain GMOs, meaning that we've all consumed them. GMOs are plants that are genetically engineered by splicing their DNA with other species, producing plant, animal, bacterial, and viral gene combinations that you probably definitely wouldn't find in nature. This technology was developed because it produces a crop that resists pests and tolerates weed killing herbicides. Now, GMOs also allow crops to grow in arid dry land that they wouldn't otherwise. Basically, the major seller here is that it allows farmers to produce a lot more food in a lot more places with a lot less work. More supply means lower food prices, so without GMO foods, a trip to the grocery store could in theory cost more. How much more? I don't know. Probably a lot though because they're a huge chunk of the supply. Also relevant, by 2050 the global population will hit 9 billion. If that doesn't sound like a buttload of people, just think about the fact that in 1950 the population was only 3 billion. Humans are like rapidly multiplying bacteria, ravaging the earth. All of those mouths to feed, coupled with the diminishing amounts of arable land, are a few of the reasons why some folks say, yay GMOs! But what about those protesters? Two million people, 52 countries. The critics say that GMO foods come at a much higher cost than people are led to believe. There is research that suggests that GMO foods aren't harmful. This is why the FDA has approved them and say that they're safe. But there's also research that suggests that GMO foods are harmful. There are hundreds of studies that suggest that GMO foods and the herbicides that are on them make people more likely to get sick. Scientists at MIT and Cambridge have found that this effect occurs gradually, slowly eroding cellular systems throughout the body and triggering some of the most common health problems in the Western world. Gastrointestinal disorders, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, depression, Alzheimer's disease. Other studies have found that GMO corn contains dangerously high level of toxins and have linked GMOs with tumors and various types of cancer. I also find it a little fishy that all 41 of the studies funded by the biotech industry concluded in support of GMOs. Another concern of the critics is that GMO crops really can't be contained. Things like wind and water runoff are causing genetic trespassing into crops that aren't GMO. They're popping up in random places and they've already contaminated up to 80% of organic crops in the Midwest. But there is talk of making another genetic modification that would make GMO offspring sterile. So this is merely the tip of the iceberg on GMO foods. If you're interested, I'd encourage you to do research of your own and see what you come up with. And let me know your thoughts down below. Are you pro-GMO or no-GMO? We'll see you again soon here on DNews.